welcome back to Cardwell Farms. Uh, today we are doing something a little different. Uh, we are making mesquite bean jelly. This is super exciting because we have a bunch of mesquite trees on our property and I really haven't known what to do with them other than firewood. But thankfully today we have a recipe that will change everything. Um, after this video, I'm going to come back out here and I'm going to tell you all a little more about mesquite beans and their uses. And um, I really hope you enjoy this recipe. Like, subscribe, and share if you enjoy it or you think someone else might. Thanks. So you're going to take them. Um Kind of break them open into your water. This is about, I don't know, six cups of water. And the reason you break them is so that if there's any bugs inside, that they have a chance to crawl out. Okay, we're going to let those, um, now that I've checked for any bugs, uh, oil for five minutes and then we're going to cover it while we do that. Timer starts now. Okay, they've been boiling for five minutes and I'm smelling like this beautiful honey nut, like nutty smell. It really smells really good. Um, you're going to leave this lid on and you're going to let them steep now for 30 minutes. Uh, I went ahead and turned off the heat. Okay, we're going to do one quarter cup of lemon juice. This is a half cup measuring spoon. Four and a half cups of sugar. For this video, I'm doing one packet of liquid pectin. You can also use a box. Next, we're going to pull out our mesquite beans and strain off the liquid. You're going to add three cups of your um, mesquite bean water. Okay, so we're going to turn this stove up. We're going to heat this until it boils for one minute straight. Remember to stir while this happens so that you don't have jam sticking to the bottom of the pot. You do not want burnt jam. In the meantime, um, in between stirs, I'm going to get these jars ready. These are half pint uh, Anchor Hawking brand jars. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and get those set up to be ready to be filled. You'll notice that... Uh, it's kind of starting to change forms, get a little more jammy in here. Um, if you can see this foam on the top, what I like to do is at the end, um, I'll go and I'll take like a spoon, a little spoon, and I'll scoop all the foam off the top. And that is good practice if you're going to be making other types of jam. Also, while I've been stirring this, I got the nine jars set up, and I also got um, a large water bathing pot ready uh, with some water, and you're going to want just enough water to come over the top of the jars by about an inch, um, and you also want to uh, go ahead and start heating it a little bit. Um, what I like to do is get mine up to about half boil to where it's not boiling, but it's like about halfway there. And that way when you add this hot jam in there and you get it going, and you can even go ahead and get it boiling, but I recommend preheating your cans or your jars in the oven a little bit before uh, dropping them in boiling water. So we're going to go ahead and stir this getting pretty hot now um, and then we're gonna fill our jars after we scrape off this foam 
and um, get these in the water bath. We are boiling. So one minute timer. Okay, so this made five jars. Um, if, is, you have to make sure you leave the proper head space. Uh, the proper head space for these jars is about a quarter inch. Um, it only made five, so I'm going to go ahead and put the lids on and get these in the water bath. Also, as a reminder, you need to make sure you wipe down all the rims, otherwise the can will not uh, seal properly. And when you tighten these on, this is finger tight. We're just barely... Okay, if you want to do them just a little tighter than that. Okay, so I got these out. Um, you can use either like canning grippers, which like grab the lid and pull it, or pull the jar up, and grab like right here in the slip. Um, but I used heat resistant gloves. Um, either way, you're gonna do this. And what I like to do is I like to flip them over once and then put them back down. Um, and what that will do is like heat this rim a little more and uh, help the seal. Uh, don't do that if you didn't tighten your lids enough though because that uh, can cause some serious burns if an accident happens. But other than that, I'm letting these cool right now in this little rack. I'm gonna let them cool for about uh, 30 to 30 minutes to an hour and then come back and check the viscosity. I just wanna show after doing that, this one is still up. But this one has now indented, which is what you want. I did hear it pop. And that was like literally 45 seconds after I flipped them once. Okay, it's about 24 hours later. And this is our jelly. It's a little thin, so I recommend... Uh, I recommend adding a little more pectin uh, when you're canning it and maybe cut back about, I don't know, like a quarter cup of um, the mesquite bean water. Um, if you perfect this, let me know in the comments, but otherwise this is good. It's sealed. Um, and it tastes amazing. So let me know what y'all think. I uh, hope you get to try this recipe. So a little bit about mesquites. Um, specifically, I'm mostly talking about honey mesquites, but some of these properties do carry over into like um, screw mesquites and, um, oh, the other one. I can't remember what it's called all of a sudden. Anyways, um, I'll put that in text below. So mesquites have been used for centuries. Native Americans and Aztecs used to use these mesquite trees as a nutrition source, especially in the drought period. So those that are in hot climates that have mesquite trees, listen up. Aztecs would use the mesquite leaves to make a lotion and mix it with water and use it as an eye um, irritant reducer um, and it also would treat infection. Comanches used mesquite leaves as a chew for uh, toothaches. They would also use the mesquite leaves for sunburns, sores, and chapped skin. The gum from mesquite uh, trees um, in the bark is used for aiding in digestion, to cure food poisoning, and for um, fixing upset stomach in general. The gum from the bark is also used to treat lice. Another thing that mesquite was used for is the seed pods can be uh, ground into a flower. Now of course you want to make sure you don't have beetles in your seed pods so look for holes of entrance um, but you can use this to make gluten-free alternatives of like pancakes and like um, biscuits and crackers. 
thank you all so much for joining me. I really hope I taught you something and I hope that you can spread the word of how useful mesquite trees are. They are native, they grow vigorously, they spread easily. If you have any, you know this. And I really hope that um, people will start using them as a source of nutrition and as a source of medicinal uses in the future. Anyways, thanks for joining us. Uh, this is Cardwell Farm again, signing off, and I really appreciate y'all. Bye!